to a very special Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green. So, Tony Katain passed away in 2021. At that time, uh, a lot of people paid their respects and their tributes on uh, social media, as the people do these days. Uh, Mark Weiss shared some of his photos of Tony Katain. Maybe there's some younger people watching who don't know who Tony Katain was, but she was a model and later an actress. And, uh, and she had some controversies in her unfortunately short life. I believe she was only 59 when she passed. Uh, she appears on the rat EP cover. Those are her legs that the rats, maybe mice, if you will, are crawling up. And, uh, and then she appears again on the cover of uh, Out of the Cellar. So she's had her history with rat. She was then married to David Coverdale of Whitesnake and appeared in the Whitesnake music videos. Uh, she is the one who dances on the cars, a pretty legendary moment. And then a lot of people remember her from the movie Bachelor Party with Tom Hanks. I think that's where her acting career um, sort of took off. And she's done a lot of other, uh, uh, did, did a lot of other movies and TV since that. So. Mark Weiss shot these photos with her in 1987. When she had passed, he decided to share um, some of the photos from a shoot that he did with her. And what was interesting was, well, this is the photo. This is the photo he shot. And what the big question became is, who is this guitar player in the photo? Most people assumed that they knew who it was. A lot of people said it was Joe Perry, Warren D. Martini. Uh, a lot of people said it was Kelly Nichols or McCripps, Brent Muscat. Some people said it was Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, um, a Nasty Suicide from Hanoi Rocks. These were all guesses that uh, people made. A very popular guess was also Joan Jett. Uh, if you guys are looking at the picture right now and you're not familiar with this uh, controversy, if you will, Comment, let me know who you think it is, because very soon we will reveal who that person is in this picture. Um, I received a text message from somebody asking me who's in this picture. And at first I looked and I was gonna say, well, it's Warren Martini. Uh, and then after looking, I realized, no, it's, I don't think it is. And no, I didn't think it was a lot of other people. And then this became a viral thing as Mark, I, I, I wasn't sure it was a Mark Wise photo, but Mark has an art to his photos and to the colors in his photos where you can usually tell Mark Weiss photo. I reached out to Mark um, because I was gonna be seeing him in Key West. And I said, hey, do you know about this viral thing with everyone trying to guess who was in the photo? He was aware of it. He was willing to come on and discuss it. Uh, I, as of right now, still do not know who it is. So it's uh, your guesses are as good as mine. We are going to share never before seen photos from this photo shoot today. I have a series of them where you will also get a closer look at the uh, mysterious guitar player's face and you get a little bit more of a look at the very beautiful Tony Katane. So, uh, so this, this, this thing's been going on and my friends have all had different guesses. Uh, one of my friends, Rachel, she insists that it's Tom Kiefer. Um, and uh, I wasn't so sure, uh, and Michelle wasn't so sure of that one either, but we've all had guesses and we've reached out to people. Uh, Tony Katain, uh, you, uh, according to the interwebs, uh, dated Amir Darak of the band uh, Orgy and at the time Rough Cut. Well, Amir commented on the photo. He did not comment to say it wasn't him. So could it be? Uh, it, he's, it's a possibility. Uh, like I said, Joan Jett, people swear it's her. People swear it's a woman. And uh, I can honestly tell you that I don't know, although I have seen this photo from um, different angles and I've now seen outtakes. Um, and I will share those outtakes with you. Um, but so this has been a fun little uh, viral mystery for a little bit of time. And finally, the wait is over. Or is it? Right after. Oh, 
All right, I'm home from traveling with Stephen Piercy. Uh, two successful shows with Vince Neil. You had the voice of Rat and the voice of Motley Crue together on the same uh, uh, bill. And we went to uh, Tempe, Arizona. And then from there, we went to uh, uh, Coachella, Palm Springs area. Uh, a few of us caught a little bit of a cold. Uh, Michelle, who was out with me uh, at, at Palm Springs, she got a cold, I've got a cold, and Johnny Monaco also has that cold. We have all tested uh, for, for the big C and uh, negative, as in most things in my life or Johnny's life, uh, negative was the answer. Uh, one person in our touring party um, it, it is a little bit more sick, but uh, it's not for me to say. And that person will be fine, we'll all be fine, and we'll be ready to see you all in Houston, Texas, on February the 11th, Eddie Trunk's big Super Bowl party, Slaughter, with Stephen Piercy. And so uh, the show will go on. Everyone will be fine. But I am fighting a little bit of a cold, but I really did want to be here for this uh, very, very special episode. So let's see uh, what some of your guess, guesses were. I'm going to put on my uh, glasses. They make me look uh, more intelligent. <clears throat> And uh, and this is we're having we're having a record amount of people tuning in for this big news. Mark Weiss will be joining us uh, very soon. Okay, let's see. Everyone agrees that it's Tony Katane. The problem is Tony Katane was not the uh, was not part of the guest. We knew it was her uh, all along. Okay, so let's see. Uh, uh, someone mentions Chuck Finley's wife. This was not Chuck Finley. Chuck Finley. He was a very successful baseball player, uh, most notably, I think, for the Angels. Uh, he was driving, and they got into a bit of an argument, and Tony Katane uh, stepped on his uh, foot <clears throat> that was on the gas, and they were in a very serious um, accident. So, uh, but yes, and uh, of course, uh, Witchboard and Crystal Heart, other classic movies. Okay, first guess up for the day. <coughs> Mick Cripps. And I, again, I don't know. Johnny Monaco. I, good, uh, good as well. I don't know. Uh, Mick Mars. We've got another Mick Mars here. And uh, let's see. Izzy Stradlin has been a very, very popular guest. Um, uh, uh, here's an interesting one. Maybe it's one of the guys from Kills for Thrills. I feel like we could end up finding out that it is uh, somebody from a smaller band like that. Uh, Richie is positive that it is a woman guitar player. And a lot of people are saying that it's a woman. Uh, yeah, Izzy, people are, a lot of people are agreeing that's Izzy. Um, someone's saying it is not a mirror, okay? Uh, of course, you have people like Brian uh, uh, who's saying just because he's holding a guitar doesn't mean he's a guitar player. That is possible, but uh, I would believe that this is a guitar player. Looks like someone out of L.A. Guns. Uh, George is very anxious. He says, can we just get to who is in the photo? And uh, yes, I, I, I get it. You're very anxious. Bendejo, uh, it says Phil Lewis. Very possible. Um, here's an interesting one. It's Lizzie Valentine from DeMalls. Could that be the truth? Is that who it is? Is, is it Lizzie Valentine from DeMalls? Not a person I know who, but it's always interesting. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, it looks like Tony Katane. That's We got that part right. Any tour diaries from those shows? Yes, there will be. Uh, uh, tour diaries from the, the last trip. Can't remember if anything interesting happened, but um, let's see. Uh, uh, Nikki Six. Richie says it's absolutely Joan Jett. Mitch, uh, we said Nikki Six. Danny, uh, uh, thirding or fourthing. Uh, Izzy Stradlin. Daniel uh, says it's the lead singer for Cinderella. And uh, let's see, Brent Muscat or Christy Crash Majors could be. And uh, let's see here. 
Is it Dr. Paul Shortino? Possibly. Andy McCoy, Keel, Satchel, even with the silly ones in. A lot of people saying it's Christy Crash Majors. Jeff misses the Christmas tree behind me. My, uh, my, my palatial estate studio is a mess. The Christmas tree is in pieces all over the, the house. I wish we could just have uh, Christmas every day. Jeffrey says it's Joan Jett. Um, let's take a look at that photo from another angle. Maybe this will help solve it. Okay, so uh, let's, let's do that. Let's take a look and get rid of this one. I, uh, as you all know, I produce my own show. Uh, no one helps. Okay, here we go. For the first time ever, you will see a second photo from that photo shoot to help you uh, with the mystery. And here it is. <clears throat> now, we do see a little more of Tawny's, uh, uh, if you will, backside, but our mysterious guitar player's face is uh, uh, still obscured. Now, we see that this gentleman wears cowboy boots. We see that he wear, plays a Les Paul guitar, if you believe, in fact, that he is a guitar player. I think he is. Um, and uh, you know that he smokes. And you know that uh, you can get a little bit of a look at his, at his height. Tony Katane, I believe, was probably 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, Mark Weiss could tell us better. But she's got some boots on. He's got some boots on. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at it. I can tell you that for those who thought it's Warren Demartini, Stephen Piercy has examined the photo and says it is not uh, uh, Warren. I, I believe he might have said that Warren and Tony didn't actually get along so well. Now, she did date Robin Crosby for quite some time. So, okay, so... We've made a little bit of history here. You, you're seeing a photo for the first time ever. Some people still insist that it's Johnny Monaco. Uh, Richie, uh, obviously very classy, uh, a fine deceased woman uh, on the screen, and he wants to point out that he loves that ass. Um, someone thinks it's Ace Freely. A lot of people think it's Ace Freely. Some people think it's Steve Stevens. Um, hold on. But, uh, and uh, Tokyo Convertible is, is, says it looks nothing like Tom Kiefer, Joan Jett, Nikki, or Izzy. But I have no clue. Vinnie Vincent is a guess. Some people say it's too skinny for Tom Kiefer, although Tom Kiefer uh, is a pretty skinny guy. And also remember, this is 1987. Tom Kiefer is a tall guy as well. I believe Tom Kiefer is taller than the person in the picture. Uh, I will tell you, again, that Mark Weiss has not revealed to me who it is. And um, this is, it, he said he, people have been asking him constantly since he posted the picture in 2021. Excuse me while I have a sip of my beverage. In my beautiful uh, Stephen Piercy sex, drugs, and rat and roll uh, coffee mug. Go to officialstephenpiercy.com and get one for yourself. And then we can uh, we can share our beverages together. Uh, Resurrected Rex says it's Tracy Guns. And he's pretty confident that it is Tracy Guns. Uh, Michelle Crisco says it could be Mick Mars. Um, Isis says, uh, uh, Isis, much like the uh, superhero television show from the 70s, says that it's a, it, she knows it's not Tom, but it's fun to hear the guesses. I am too, and I will begin, I will tell you that people have kind of convinced me of people I thought it wasn't. Paul Mars Black, it's a great one. Brian Forsythe was one that also a lot of people guessed. Brian Damage Forsythe. Um, Richie's sticking to that it's a woman. Uh, some A lot of people think that. Uh, Michael Angelo Badio, who is now of the band, Man of War. We have over 200 people here right now. This is a. Uh, uh, this could go a lot of directions. This could be the biggest uh, rock and roll news story in of the modern day, or this could be Al Capone's fault. Uh, I used to work for Geraldo Rivera uh, shortly after he uh, examined Al Capone's fault. If you remember, it was a they blew it up and they got in and they wore their hard hats. And they found nothing but a few bottles. Uh, 
I'm hoping this will be uh, a little bit more exciting. Some people say that it's going to be an actor, just some random nobody. Some people say it's going to be one of the names that you're guessing. And other people say that it will be uh, a guy from a lesser known band. I will shed a little bit more light on the photo. It was taken in New York City. A lot of us suspected that this was a West Coast photo. Mark Weiss, though, was an East Coast photographer. I mean, he shot photos all over the world. But uh, So could it be somebody from one of these bands in the late 80s, early 90s? There was all kinds of bands in New York that uh, uh, that didn't quite make it. You know, your, your bands like the Throbs and uh, uh, there was one called Trouble Tribe or Princess Pang, Spread Eagle. Uh, I don't know the exact years for these bands. Some came a little bit later. But so there was a lot of those kind of bands in New York. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, Ryan Roxy. Mark himself has been a very common guest. Not terrible. Mark always photographed himself as well. Some people say it is Mark Weiss in the photo. Gilby Clark is a guest. Uh, Tammy is thinking, or Tommy, I apologize, Tommy, I didn't mean to uh, crush gender you, uh, saying uh, it's probably an unknown. Uh, someone else says it's Carrie Kelly, which is pretty much an unknown. Uh, Steve I uh, is a guess. Richie Sambora or Frankie Wilsey, talk about opposite ends of the spectrum. A few people have suggested uh, Frankie Wilsey. Frankie Wilsey was in a band called the Sea Hags. He's from San Francisco, the Bay Area. That's where the band is based, was based out of. Um, the, who knows? I've posted this on my social media. I know a lot of these people, and no one has come uh, uh, afford. Someone points out that maybe Michelangelo Badia had a larger beak. Um, Joe in Seattle, who is forever the uh, optimist, he believes that this will definitely be Al Capone's vault. Uh, let's see here. Uh, <clears throat> a lot of guesses. And like I said, a lot of people are saying Mark Weiss. And of course, uh, Alan points out the suspense is intense. And yes, it is. This is a major moment in uh, rock and roll history. Ryan Roxy from the Electric Angels. Um, getting a lot of Mick Cripps. And so it shows that if you have black hair and you play Les Paul, uh, people may think you're somebody from that scene. Mark will be here. Don't uh, don't think that, that I'm just dragging this out. He will be here. So still, I'm showing you some. <laughs> Smash Gladys is one that I heard somebody guess before. Uh, somebody I know uh, believe that one. An another smaller kind of uh, New York band, I, I believe. So uh, I did see a few people say Gina Gershon. I think as we look at another angle of the photo, you will realize that it is not Gina Gershon. Uh, Bart Lewis of Smash Gladys. That is the first time that we've put a name to it. We're solving this puzzle um, together. And I hope one of you is right. Um, I sure hope so. If you ask nicely, Amir Durak will tell you an amazing story involving him, Tony, and O.J. Simpson. She dated O.J. after Amir. That is true. Tony Katane uh, did date O.J. Simpson. She she was at Howard Stern's wedding uh, with O.J. Simpson. Um, I don't think that has anything to do with her tragic demise. Ariel Styles is a great guess. <clears throat> Ariel Styles, the original guitar player for Pretty Boy Floyd. He wrote a lot of the songs. Uh, and I'm not someone that everyone knows what he looks like. I've heard Christy Crash Majors, but what if it is Ariel Styles? Uh, okay, look what the cat dragged in says Scotty Hill. Guys, I'm 99.9% .9 positive. That's pretty confident. Let's go over reasons why it could be Scotty Hill. I don't think it is, but this photo was taken in 1987. Mark Weiss was very close. To Skid Row and uh, and knew Sebastian before he was in. He was, Sebastian was at his wedding when he was still in Madame X, I believe. So Scotty Hill had there. There's some reasons. Izzy Stralin again, of course. Ronnie Colley, or Coley or whatever his name is of the Throbs. Sure, it's possible. Ace uh, Ace Freely, of course. Um, and uh, let's see here. Alex Skolnick. Scotty Hill doesn't have that nose. 
Roger Erickson from Smash Gladys. I'm glad to see this. We have 207 people watching right now. I will ask that you all like this video. That will help uh, the life of this video. And let's get some other people excited that we're having a good time. Uh, and if you are new here and you haven't subscribed, well, by all means, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. It's not just uh, uh, Unsolved Mysteries. We also have brand new interviews every Friday. This Friday, my guest is Cherie Curry of The Runaways. Did I ask Cherie if that's Joan Jett in the photo? I don't know. You have to tune in Friday. My Patreons have already watched it. If you uh, love me or even tolerate me, uh, please sign up for Patreon and watch the interviews before anyone else. Watch my tour diaries before everyone else, and you'll get to see them ad free. So we got those plugs out of the way, but it does help. And uh, uh, the Cherie Curry interview, I didn't know what to expect from Cherie. I had worked with her a little while back, and she was represented by Kenny Laguna, who also represents Joan Jett. And I didn't spend much time with her. Brought her to Vegas. She did a show with Sin City Sinners. We talked a little bit, and that was it. Uh, but the interview was fantastic, and I think she answered questions that have never been answered before. One, she was supposed to be in a movie called Savage Streets. It's a, a great <laughs> B movie with Linda Blair topless in most of it. And she got fired and Linda Blair replaced her. Uh, for the first time ever, Cherie Curry will reveal what happened and why she was fired. And she also talks about um, her, her upcoming record, her upcoming tour. She talks about um, the famous corset. You know, we all gawked at her in that corset. She'll tell us what happened to it and, uh, and a lot more. So, uh, uh, here we go. Nasty suicide is possible. A lot of people, I think that nasty suicide would be back on the show very soon, uh, by the way. And uh, let's see here. Um, here's an interesting one I like. Uh, Johnny Vance, the lead singer from Skin and Bones. You know, when I was thinking of the names, I thought, you know, it could be uh, uh, those kind of bands, Skin and Bones or... Uh, I had one in my mind before, but I can't remember it. Uh, Cry Wolf, that was one I was thinking. Cry, Cry Wolf. Uh, Linda Blair has some retarded tits. I don't think that you can use that word anymore, tits. I think that's been canceled. Uh, okay, did Linda Blair go topless? Of course, yes, multiple times in that movie. Uh, and yes, we discussed Foxes starring Jodie Foster. Um, to, uh, uh, Cherie Curry was up for two very famous movies, uh, legendary movies. One was Foxes, and one was something that I'm a bigger fan of, and she turned that one down to be in uh, Foxes, so you're going to like that. Uh, and so, okay, there's Kelly Nichols. Uh, people say Johnny Thunders, but they think the guy's too young. Johnny Thunders would have been a little older. He did live into the 90s. Uh, I believe something like that. Uh, okay, uh, somebody thinks it's um, Mark from XYZ, CJ Snare before his haircut. Brian Forsythe, that is one that we got quite a bit. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the tour diaries uh, on this channel. Episode 13 is coming out this Monday. It's a lot of work to film these. It's also sometimes difficult to stick a a camera or a phone in people's faces and get all the things you want to see. Uh, I can tell you we had a good time. Dana Strum told a lot of uh, stories. He plays with Vince and I'll see him again with Slaughter and he makes some appearances and hopefully soon he'll sit down for a formal interview. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, Jesse Mallon, that's an interesting guest. Uh, Jesse Mallon could be. Uh, that's a New York name. I'm 100% sure it's Roger Erickson of the Throbs and Smash Gladys. He's 100% sure. Is he correct? Is that the name? Be sure it would be fun if it was. Someone says the guitarist from the Gutter Cats. Love the tour diaries. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I'm, I'm glad. A lot of people are saying they're enjoying um, the tour diaries. And so... Um, and so yeah, new ones coming. I want to point out that some people don't understand what the tour diaries is that these were shot last year. So, um, 
on the last episode that aired, I have a blemish on my nose because I had a biopsy for skin cancer. A lot of people wishing me well, I want to point out, most of my audience knows, but I've already had the, the surgery to remove the cancer. I'm feeling good. I've definitely got more energy after it was removed. Uh, I wish I would have caught it sooner, but I'm fortunate and I'm fortunate that I had a very treatable form of skin cancer. One of the reasons I like to wear a mask, besides is I don't like people sneezing on me, is that I didn't like having this big bloody uh, thing on my nose, which was a tumor. Uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger knows about that. Excuse me, uh, talk amongst yourselves for just a moment. Anyway, Mark Weiss will be here in just a bit. But So remember the tour diaries, when you watch those award-winning shows like the Kardashians, you know, they don't, it's not happening in real time. It's happening, uh, you know, it's uh, whatever. All right, let's see what else you guys are thinking. Vito uh, Prada. By the way, I haven't seen a super chat yet. I, all this drama and all the suspense and no one is uh, super or, or chatting. Uh, here's an interesting one. Definitely could be Brian Forsythe, right height and the boots, East Coast. I think Brian Forsythe might be a little shorter, but you never know. Looks like a mix between Ace, Joan Jett, and Nasty Suicide. Are you still shooting Toy Dars? Yes, absolutely. I just filmed this weekend uh, the episode that came out now. I'll tell you a quick thing before Mark Weiss gets here. When you have audio that might be copyrighted, and YouTube flags it. Stephen Piercy likes to come on stage to the James Bond theme. YouTube flagged it and said I could not release it, uh, could not monetize it. And so you can offer them the chance to mute it. Well, <coughs> I let them mute it and uh, it threw off the timing of the video, which is terrible, really big pain in the ass. So if you watch number 12, South Dakota, Stephen Piercy and the guys head to uh, Mount Rushmore, you'll see that the audio is off at, at times. But uh, ha have no, have no fear. Uh, it's it, it still looks nice. And uh, next one is the Iowa State Fair. A lot of good ones. You're going to see a lot of interesting things um, as they happen. And 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 members who jump in, Gordon Jump. It could be Gordon Jump. Uh, uh, you know, Gordon Jump. Uh, it was probably a little older at the time. Oh, hold on. Screw everybody. Here's a super chat. Will Johnny stop by? I have a line on his coast. Bar of soap and Quispera. Well, we're gonna ha you'll have to give it to him uh, next week. Uh, the line, but he would be happy. He he would like that. Um, okay, thank you. And yeah, it's a bit of a cough. Uh, it sucks. And uh, let's see, Roger Erickson, the Bellas. Now, is this the Bellas? The Bellas, my favorite young uh, uh, band. I met in New Jersey. How would you guys know who Roger Erickson is? I think dad, someone of you guys has got dad uh, or a much older boyfriend. I hope that's not the case. Uh, but anyway, uh, you guys let me know where you came up with that because Roger Erickson, is, that's an obscure name. By the way, check the Bellas out. They've been on the show and they, they, uh, they, they, they they'll, you guys would love the Sheree Curry interview. Uh, Eric Birdingham from Cinderella could be the guy, Eric Birdingham. Chris, sometimes you say off things, but uh, I can guarantee you it's not him. Uh, uh, saying my nose looks good. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, it's There's a filter on here. But uh, anyway, look, enough about my, my face and my nose. When we can bring the Weiss guy in here and he can shed some light on it. Now, like I said, we've been stalling for 30 minutes. This is the great debate. Uh, but Mark Weiss is here. We'll probably stall a little longer and take a look at some of the shoot, uh, that shoot that never before seen pictures. I want to mention that Mark isn't just here to uh, solve mysteries. He's also here to promote a, a great book that I've really been enjoying called Keep On Rolling. And this is my fan club years with Qu uh, Kevin Debro and Quiet Riot. This book is a, a, com a collection of photographs from Mark Weiss and um, Ron Sobel, who was a photographer with Quiet Riot also. And it's uh, it's written by uh, Missy Whitney, who was the fan club president for Debro, which was the name of Quiet Riot after Randy had left, and then would go back to um, Quiet Riot with the the core lineup that you guys are used to, the Metal Health lineup. And so anyway, this is a great book. I mean, 
tons of photos that you've never seen before. The Randy Rhodes photos are incredible. I just happened to open up the page to, to this one. And uh, there really is some great stuff in here. And tons of Mark's great stuff that he shot with the guys. Uh, great collection of photos, tour itineraries, everything you can think of. And then these fan club letters. And, and you really get a different side of Kevin. Um, so there's that book. And, of course, The Decade That Rocked, uh, which is incredible. It's on sale right now. Link in the description. Uh, pick that up. What I like so much about Mark's books is that uh, you can pick them up at any time. Pick it up off the table, open up to a page, and you can have a conversation and see a really cool photo, make a cool memory. So these are really great books. I recommend them. And uh, anyway, uh, enough of me talking about his books. Here he is right now, the man of the hour, Mark Weiss. Hey, hey, hey. Mark, I'm glad to see you again. Yeah, I've been uh, listening in and to all the comments, and uh, it's it's uh, it's fun. I never would think that like one photograph uh, that I took almost forty years ago would uh, you know raise uh, raise some breaking news as uh, as it hit on your screen earlier. Yes, it's become it, it's become a little bit of a viral thing. People were asking me about it. Who really don't pay attention to things like this? It was it it was becoming more than just the uh, the rock scene. People were curious about this photo, and then everyone began to guess. And some of the guesses seem ridiculous. Now, um, so it this this whole mystery started in 2021 when Tony unfortunately passed away, and you shared the photo. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um... You know, whenever uh, someone passes or it's a birthday, uh, you know, I'll do a post. And uh, especially when someone passes, I'll, I'll write a little something, my memories and throw some photos that no one's ever seen before. Just uh, and every year as uh, the years go by, I'll I'll post new shots as well. Uh, just one of the things I do on social media that, uh, you know, I wake up one morning and I, I never really remember like whose birthday it was or when that person passed until I get on. Uh, you know, my headbangers, uh, D Snyder's site. Uh, and I get this, you know, every morning I get like what's happening, you know, history. And then I'll just create something with, uh, <clears throat> with Camille who works in my office and both of us kind of put our heads together and we, we put something up. Yeah. And so the photo came out, we saw the photo earlier. This is a, the 1987 spread. This introduces each decade in your book, The Decade That Rock. And if people look in the upper right-hand corner, first you'll see a dancing undercover all at Access Pass, but right next to that, you'll see a slide of Tawny from this photo shoot, which is one of the ways that people knew it was your photo because they could match this to it. Also, as I said, your style um, for 80s rock photography, uh, people know your photos. It's, it's, it's great that you can identify someone by their work. It's the best compliment I think you can give a photographer. Oh, thanks. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know I was creating a certain look, but looking back, uh, you know, people have been telling me that and then, and I look at it now and, and, you know, I can tell a Mark Weiss photo <laughs> and, I, and I've taken so many as I forget, like in this case, I forgot I even had that photo and then I posted it, but, uh, you know, uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to see your photos up there and people talking about them. So I really appreciate you, uh, making this a breaking news item. Yes, I love the colors in your photos, especially the Motley Crue photos uh, right around, uh, I guess that's Shadow of the Devil period, the, 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 the outfits and the suits and just the backdrops are, are so incredible. And, and for those who are watching who might not be completely familiar with Mark's career, I, I find it hard to believe, but he also did the Slippery When Wet um, record cover, the Night Songs record cover for Cinderella. Um, his work is has been seen uh, countless times. You did Skid Row also, right? Yeah, I did the back cover for Skid Row uh -huh. um, and uh, the Danzig uh, pull out for the solo, you know, his first album, and also Suicidal Tendencies and the Anthrax. I'm the man. Yeah, and these are covers that when you look at them, uh, you instantly remember them. They bring back good memories. So, uh, and uh, we did an interview with Mark before. It's on this channel. So, if you want to find out how he got into photography and things. Uh, go back, watch that one. We'll put it in the description. And because today we're really talking about what he has going on now, and we're going to reveal uh, the big news. But and and then it, Mark will probably answer some questions. If you guys had some questions, this is your chance um, to to have some one-on-one -on -one time. Mark, it was great seeing you in Key West. 
Um, yeah, that was fun. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Steve what a, that, yeah. What a great time. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, yeah, I, gra I grabbed my, my friend Glenn and his wife Donna and my girlfriend Mikkel. We went from St. Augustine to Key West. It took us about eight hours after I drove to Key West from New Jersey. So altogether, it was over a 20-hour drive. Uh, we went and hit in my friend Glenn's RV, and we parked it backstage. We had a 40-foot, and we kind of stayed there the whole time. And I, I was doing a book signing as well and you know, talking to the fans, taking pictures, interviewing people which uh, I will be posting eventually. Yeah, uh, it's it's a fun feeling to be on stage. I'm staying on stage with Steven and to see you out taking photos. It, you feel like, you, you know, you're back in time uh, with, with the rock scene, uh, the, the way it's, it, it should be. So it was great seeing that. And it's great that people get to meet you and see the books. I should mention the Twisted Sister covers, my favorites, of course, oh, right there. Yeah, stay hungry and, uh, and come out and play. And uh, the come out and play... Uh, manhole is right over here. The the uh, the one that D popped out under, like, and it's huge and can't be moved, right? It was the lid of it. Actually, the manhole uh, is at the Hard Rock in in Florida. Uh, the actually physical manhole, uh, the metal one. But this is the the piece that went underneath it, where we put D out, up underneath this the street. So it wasn't this you know two ton metal manhole. It was just this. Uh, you know, we made it out of wood and we kind of did some, you know, magic paint to it and all that. Uh, so that's yeah. what's sitting in the back of me. Yeah. When Motley Crue did their residency here, they had a great gallery set up for you. And the manhole was on display and it was so cool. Um, yeah, to see. Right when I have Eddie Ojeda, he's been on the show several times. He always said that they really never got any video of that tour. It, this, the set design and the manhole and all these things were so big. And that there's really very little video and probably the only picture is maybe yours. There's not much out there. And uh, the only video there is actually is when we did the photo shoot in my studio in New York. And that's on my uh, social media. I just posted. I just started embracing the TikTok app and then and taking the content from that and then posting it on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Twitter and all that. But I just did this thing called uh, Under the Covers where I talk about the album cover and uh with the video and i found video footage of me in my studio nd uh, back when i was you know mid 25 years old when i took that i think 24. uh mark mitch has a good question was there ever a photo shoot that went wrong or got awkward throughout your career uh yeah it's always good to have one thing you could <laughs> one shoot that uh that went wrong because when you get that question you know you know you know it doesn't all go great but uh but there was one shoot and uh it ended up being a successful photo shoot but it's you know some, sometimes you just don't jive with the artists you know for whatever reason i mean i'm a fun guy i'm i take everything very lightly and uh and not too serious and when things don't go as i like i try to spice it up and kid around and that kind of backfired me on this one so that was for uh, an album I did, which was the solo album of Glenn Danzig, you know, or Danzig, his uh, mm -hmm. first one. The record company hired me. I never shot them, never met him before. So they came into my studio and you know, they were very, you know, pretty, pretty straight, pretty, not, not, not too chatty. And so we went right into business and we, we went right to, right to town and taking photographs. And, you know, my job is to make these guys look as best as possible. I start positioning them. Uh, Glenn's a little smaller and I wanted to make sure, you know, he looked big and huge, you know, cause he was the singer and it's his voice and, and I wanted him to look larger than life. So the way to do that is you, you bring him out front and use a longer lens, the guys in the back drop back and everyone looks like they're on the same plane. Just one of those things with photography. So I started doing that, that, that went good. Then I wanted to put them all like in a row and, uh, and just do some, some different, different vibes. And I started, angle yeah i i wasn't really getting it so i every time i asked them to move to the left or to the right everyone would just look straight at me and they wouldn't even move and i'm like i need to take some variations of this and and get the vibe going so i started going from one the one guy i just kind of moved him to the left a little bit i grabbed his arm and, and i i do i do that all the time with all the bands that i shot i'll like physically move them and if they you know, sometimes I'll tickle them and kid around a little bit and then start loosening up. <laughs> in this case, I 
did the first guy. I don't even remember the guy's names. And then I went to the next guy. And when it went to Glenn, he's like, don't touch me. And I was like, okay. Uh, I went back, took a few more photos, spent a little more time with them. And, and kind of that was it. And then, you know, the next day I called the record company up. I said, you know, how'd you like the photos? And he goes, everyone loves the photos, but Glenn doesn't want to work with you anymore. And I'm like, I'm like, why? I go, I, I don't know. And then I kind of like, kind of figured it out that, you know, you know, certain personalities, they don't, they don't gel together. And, uh, you know, had you seen him since, you know, I, uh, about eight years later, uh, I went to, they were playing at the, at the Count Basie, I believe. And I went and I was supposed to have a photo pass and I went and knocked on the, on the, I saw my name on it and it was scratched off. And I, I couldn't believe it. You know, I was like, what's going on? So I went to the tour bus, knocked on it, and the tour manager came out, who I knew. And I said, you know, what's the story? You know, he goes, oh, let, me, let me check it out. And he came back and he goes, Mark, I don't know, but you can't even be in the building. Uh, I was like, oh, OK. And I, I kind of figured, you know, it came from that. And then fast forward like 15 or 20 years, you know, uh, a friend of mine was a uh, the tour manager and he actually he, he must have forgot uh because he was really nice to me and everything was cool and i didn't bring it up yeah I, maybe he mellowed out as the years went on because uh, and at that time he was probably trying to really put out that angry uh image but uh yeah well that it, it's a good it makes for a good story as as you said uh we're gonna get to the reveal in a minute another good question someone wants to know which slippery when wet cover well mark did both well there was actually more than both it was actually first a uh, called wanted dead or alive is wanted and i dressed them all up like uh or they dressed up like like cowboys and they grew beards and kind of like a gang and i did a wanted poster and that was like the first cover um and then that obviously got scratched and then uh we went to the slippery when wet inspired by the number five club in vancouver where the girls kind of had the wet t-shirts in the plexiglass and we took that and we went with that and they printed 200,000 copies and there was some uh misinformation that uh got to john on the border color and and uh we ended up changing that to just john coming into my studio and writing slippery when wet and he said that's it screw it you know that's our cover yeah it's it's pretty it's a garbage bag right yeah, it's a hefty. Yeah, it's it's a, maybe the most famous hefty bag in uh, in existence. Okay, uh, Mark Sanchez asks: um, Has Mark ever done photos for a band that he wasn't a fan of? Didn't care for their music? I'm sure that's happened. Uh, you know, probably. Uh, I don't really remember. I mean, usually, uh, you know, I get. You know, you get to know these guys and and you start whether you like the music, you start liking it because you like the guys. So, you know, I always say whenever I do a photo shoot, I, it's like having four or five new friends. Uh, I mean, I liked 80s hard rock, rock, you know, metal, pop rock, uh, punk rock, classic rock. I mean, I, I like all music, but uh I kind of like all the bands that I've shot. I mean, I've also shot pop and I'm not too crazy about that uh, or rap, you know, in the later yeah, you years. Shot, you shot hip hop as well. I mean, you're known for the decade that rock, but yeah. your photo career didn't end there. You shot lots of bands that weren't, uh, you know, of that same genre. And so, um, but I think you, you know, I think maybe you might not be a fan of them, but as you said, the personalities, sometimes when you work with some of these people, they have this larger than life personality it's sometimes more interesting than the music that they may be making, especially some of the nineties people I think you shot. Yeah. And I was into the image, you know, if the, the band looked cool, you know, that was, that was awesome. You know, like that kind of got me and uh, you know, if they had some guitars and bass and drums and they, they, they hit it hard. Uh, I liked them. Uh, you know, there's, yeah, of course some bands more than others that I liked, but uh you know, I came from the, I came from the school of Aerosmith, Kiss, uh, you know, Led Zeppelin. Uh, those are my favorite bands back in the day, and and a lot of the bands that in the '80s, those were their favorite bands too. And Kiss, of course, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's like you know we're all cut from the same cloth. 
Did you shoot the Wu-Tang Clan? I did, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Many yeah. times I, I hung with them. I partied with them because uh, I worked for this magazine called Bravo, which was a German magazine, weekly and very big. And I got a lot of access. And that got me to uh, like when the 80s kind of died out, you know, in the 90s. I mean, I did a little bit of the 90s, but they weren't into getting their picture taken. So I didn't like keep barking up that tree because it wasn't the same. Uh, then I started uh, working for Bravo a little bit and I was shooting pop bands. Like I did NSYNC's, like one of their first photo shoot and Backstreet Boys, first photo shoot, one of them. And then Christina Aguilera did Genie in a Bottle. I shot it on the, the video set as a still and I did some photos in the back. She liked me or management liked me and I started being her photographer. I even did an album cover for her. Same with Gwen Stefani, Lil' Kim, Lil' Bow Wow, Usher, Nelly, uh, mm -hmm. LL Cool J. I, I got, you know, one day this will come out in a, probably a book um, and a gallery too. But I'm so busy with the Decade That Rock. That's really where my passion is. And that's really the people that I relate to. So, you know, I mean, I don't know how many years I got left to you know, keep archiving and whatnot. So hopefully I'll have some time in, in a few years after all my other books. I mean, I, there's so many books I want to do. It's, uh, and uh, well, I think you've stumbled onto a really good thing with these books. You, you, you don't make the books too much about you. It's not just, although I think an autobiography about your end of it is, would be really interesting too, but you really share the photos and you set the time. And so for someone who was there, you can flip to each page and the memories come back. And for someone who might might be younger or wasn't there, same thing. You start to sort of connect the dots and relive these things. And and, and as I said, these books are really um, they're really fun books. I want to ask get one more question in before we take a look at that photo shoot, uh, the famous twenty contained photo shoot. Uh, this was an interesting question that I saw. If I could find it, Kevin asks. He was saying, "What are your thoughts on Niels Lozauer? What before you answer? I always wondered, did the photographers get along? Because there were so many, it was Ross Halfin and Niels Lozauer was the West Coast probably more, Mark Weiss was the East Coast. Do you guys get along? Well, now we do. <laughs> you know, but, but back then, just like, I mean, like some of the bands, uh, you know, uh, you want to be number one. You want to be, you want, like when Motley Crue did a video shoot, uh, you want to be the only photographer on the set, you know, if, uh, they did a photo shoot or an album cover. So it was competitive in that respect. And also, uh, let's face it, like if we, uh, Neil, me and Ross, those are the three that, you know, everyone else that are kind of uh, in another, you know, there's so many rock and roll photographers, but the three of us were the most like aggressive, I guess you could say. And there were so many magazines. And if you shot Motley Crue or Guns N' Roses or, or Bon Jovi or Ozzy against a blue background, and you'd sell them to all the magazines. And if you put them against the red background, then change their coat. So we would be, I, I would anyway be changing the backgrounds a lot. Like that's why I shot uh, a black background with smoke and gels because it was easy to change the color in the back. And, and that would, that's how my kind of my little, my vibe came through through things like that. Cause I wanted to make money to sell to all the magazines. So each one had their own exclusive. So, so another photographer does a photo shoot that takes up, you know, that's some of your business. You know, if you have that exclusive, then you, you got the business. So yeah, it was very competitive. Uh, um, after the whole thing went, went away, you know, the eighties, and then we started bumping into each other and things, then, then it was different. You know, we, we, you know, we were all archiving and, you know, we're selling gallery prints and we're doing books uh, but yeah, I mean, we were, uh, I wouldn't say we're rivals. I mean, you know, Neil invited me to his 50th birthday party. Like, I guess it was over a decade ago and we see each other on the cruises and we hang out. And so, you know, we're yeah. All, you know, yeah, time will, time will do that, but you can imagine the, the competition. Okay. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the Tony Katan. There's a lot of great questions. There's 300 people watching with us live. And there'll be tons of people tuning in um, later uh, as this goes into the replays. So we'll start with um, the photo that th this is the photo. So this is the photo that you shared. And this began 
um, the, 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 the controversy or the mystery. This was the first shot. I've shared it. Everyone is sharing it. Everyone has been guessing at it. And then uh, a little earlier in the show, for the first time, uh, we shared. And these photos are all courtesy of Mark, obviously, and the decade that rocked. Uh, and I thank him for, for bringing him on here to share them. We shared this one, which gave us a little bit more of a look at Tony, but not so much more of a look at... Uh, the, uh, the guitar, the mystery guitar player. Okay, so we got, we got that. Let's keep looking and see if we can't uh, wait, solve wait, this. this why, is don't your last throw, why, why don't you throw some eye candy photos in there without the dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are coming. <laughs> okay, coming. Now, first, this, here's the slide, and this is appears in the decade that rock. Right. And uh, and this is this is probably an, the original slide from 1987. Yeah, yeah, that's how I, and it says, what's, so there's a month on there. I think it says May. Yeah. And, no. and that's how I kind of uh, figured out where I was, when I was, and where I did it uh, by, by that little stamp of the date on there. Um, and she's probably one of the very few people that aren't, you know, isn't a rock star that's in the book. Uh, the only other person that I could think of, aside from fans, is um, Robbie Knievel. Uh, to me, he was a rock star, and he's in 1982. I, I hung out with him. We were buddies. I actually just did a post, uh, you know, on his passing. We were really yeah. good friends till the day he died. Um, and he's, a, he, I did a photo shoot with Robbie in 1982 for We Magazine, and we became fast friends. So Robbie and Tony are uh, really the only non rock stars that are in the in the book. Yeah, and uh, which is an honor, but they are so part of that um, that scene. So, okay, so here's, uh, so we're looking at this photo and, uh, and we're looking at a little bit more uh, and then we'll get, we'll get to it. it. We've dragged it out, which is good. It's been a few weeks. <laughs> I, I'm excited. I like, I, I'm, as I've told the audience, I do not know the answer. Here's a great photo of Tawny as well from that shoot. Um, now, Mark, tell me a little bit about, uh, first of all, did you know Tawny well? I'm assuming you did. Yeah, I mean, I knew her through the Rat Guys when she was at the Rainbow hanging out with. Actually, I have this really a great shot of uh, Stephen and and Twenty. I I should send it to Stephen. When I was looking through pictures for the book, I came across this photo of, of when I was hanging out with Stephen at the uh, Rainbow, and Twenty was with her with him, and I got this you know just a candid photo. Um, but yeah, she was at the. Uh, I shot her in the, you know, in the White Snake videos, you know, so I was at the video shoot for that. And, uh, you know, just we know the same people. We hang out, you know, the Rainbow. Anytime I went into L.A., she, you know, she was there a lot. And, uh, you know, everyone just you know catches up and, and chats. So when she the story behind this photo shoot on how that happened, it um I was doing, uh, you know, I did Stay Hungry and I did come out and play. And the next record for uh, Twisted Sister was Love is for Suckers. And they were looking for a girl model to suck on a, lo uh, on a lollipop. Um, so, you know, Dee said, you know, um, can you get a girl for a test? And, you know, we can, we can, you know, see if we like the idea or the concept. So Tony was in town and I, you know, called her up and I said, you know, you want to come in just for a test shoot. If you want to, if you want to do some other photos for fun, we can do that too. So I took, I don't even think I took uh, real photos, which I kicked myself in the head for, but she's actually sucking on like a, one of these Sharpies with like a flat head on it, you know? So, so she just has a, a, a Sharpie in her mouth and she's like, you know, sucking on it. And it was for love is for suckers. And I, it was just a test and took a couple minutes and that was it. Uh, I do have a Polaroid of that, which I will uh, post uh, sooner than later, or maybe save it for the next book. Uh, yeah, well, you, everyone's got to sign up for uh, uh, Mark's social media as well. Cause he, he releases this great stuff all the time. Thanks. Yeah. And, and then after about, you know, an hour or so uh, her, uh, her friend came in she go, and then he came in with a guitar and you know he looked like a cool rocker. I I didn't know him. I never met him before. Uh, and uh, we you know just you freeze, Mark. You hear me? Yeah, I hear it. Okay, good. So I thought you froze for one second. Um, 
The Love is for Suckers cover looks like it's animated. They, they didn't end up using Tony, obviously, right? No, they didn't. They didn't. No. Yeah. So I'm going to show this photo now that shows the guitar player's face, which will help a little bit of the discussion. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and then I'm going to tell everyone how I reached out to Mark about this. Okay, so here it is, first time, uh, courtesy of Mark Weiss. So we know it's New York City. We know it's 1987. Uh, and we know that uh, Tawny brought her friend to the shoot who is a guitar player. Now, uh, as I, I asked Mark, are you aware of this whole viral thing that's happening? People are messaging me. And Mark was aware. And we were about to go to Key West. And I, he said, I'll come on the show and we'll talk about it. And so I said, OK, great. And we both got busy. And so it got put off for a couple of weeks. And then I said to Mark, is there any chance that somebody is going to figure out who this is before the show? Because I said, what a buzzkill it would be if we if we uh, <laughs> if someone just guessed or I wondered if the person would come forward when people were guessing Brian Forsythe and uh, and Amir Derrock. These are all people on my social media. Nasty Suicide. Most of these people I know. Uh, and then some of these people I was able to rule out. So Mark's answer to me at that point was he wasn't exactly sure who it was either, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so that at least convinced me that no one was going to ruin our, 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 our moment, but also convinced me that it is not Joan Jett or Izzy Stradlin or Tom Kiefer because Mark would rem remember those. Right. He did right. tell me that he had a photo uh, excuse me, a text message conversation with Tawny, where Tawny gave the name of the person. And Mark said uh, that he would read the text. And I asked him yesterday if he knew who it was. He says he does. And so the question we're going to find out right now, is this person uh, famous? Is this person in a band that was just sort of known? Or is this just some random guy? This could be... Oh uh, a huge announcement, or it could be Al Capone's vaults. All right, Mark. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, three hundred and fifty you know, people are waiting right now. All right. Well, um, I've seen Al Capone's vault, um, and I watched the same thing. It was pretty hysterical. Uh, I guess I'm going to say this could be a repeat. Um, mm -hmm. I, I went to the to my text message for Tawny, and it wasn't there anymore. I just went there this morning. And I, I know I asked her at the time and I, I me and my brain, I, I totally forgot at the time, you know. So then I figured, all right, I'm going to definitely figure it out before the show that, you know, and that's why I put it off last week because I was still over in St. Augustine and I just got back last night really late. So this morning I had Camille, who does my archives, to look at my arc, to, to look for the 20 uh uh, photos and and she couldn't find the files because I did some shifting around and uh, and then I said uh, and then I did some research because I looked at it and I was like all right I think I mean I I don't even know you know for sure okay but I can see you I can give you my speculation because I felt really bad that I you know I'm going to be on the show I didn't want to put it off but I wanted to like figure it out so that's why I kind of blew up the photos and I'm looking on the internet and uh, I believe that it's a guy that was in a band at that time called uh, the Cherry Bombs. Uh, he had a solo album. He was in a band before that called Hanoi Rocks. And I think it's nasty. All right. <laughs> that. That definitely makes it interesting, but you um, know, you, you're going to have nasty on, right? Uh, in a yeah, bit. I'll have to. I'll have to ask him for sure. So now maybe, I got. So maybe. So I, we got 300 people pissed off at me, but I really tried, you know. And I thought I had the I, I thought I had the text message from Tony, but it was wiped out. I guess you know because of her passing. Maybe uh, whoever was handling her her um, her page. Um, you know, took everything down or something. I don't know. I was really bummed out. I think I saved it when it happened, but I can't, I couldn't dig it up in like in a few hours, you know? Well, we're, the, the, so the mystery um, continues. <laughs> Boy, people are so upset. Oh, um, oh come on. Yeah. Well, hey, go to, I'm telling you, 
I mean, look at look at go to you know Hanoi Rocks pictures or just Google uh, nasty suicide, and uh, and look. I mean, I think it's him. You know, I really do. I, I you know, he had a band called the Cherry Bombs around that time. It makes sense. He was in New York, um, and uh, I. It vague. We remember in that text. I vaguely remember that name being brought up. So I'm just. It's just a little bit of hearsay right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but come on, everyone out there, go on your Googles and uh, and check it out and look at that guy. Look at his jawline. Look at his eyes. Look at his nose. Look at his hair. I mean, the hair. Everyone's got the same hair. But uh, I say it's nasty suicide. Well, it's a little late in Finland, but uh, I'll reach out to him. L luckily, it's someone I, ha I and we can get that confirmed. That that would be great if that's who it is. It, it, well, um, I'll but, tell you what. Uh, on the the next show, when or you know when you have him on, we can let this linger on a little bit more, and and people could Google. Uh, you know, it's definitely not from Smash Gladys. I shot them. It's you know, it's not Scotty Hill. It's actually no one that anyone's really mentioned because i know everyone uh nasty suicide is the only one i didn't really know uh everyone else is uh i i could rule out everyone else that that it was mentioned yeah that that's which you know? what's uh which makes it so much more interesting <laughs> that you're guessing as much as we are of course it, it it could not be any of those people that you like you said you would know them Oh, hold on. Vito Brada is here with the super sticker. Thank you, Vito. Um, the uh, yeah, it would be it. Those other names you would remember. Uh, this is definitely one that uh, you don't. So I'm going to ask Nasty if it was him. Although that second photo where he's facing the camera, he looked a little bit. Uh, I know. Little, I know. When I saw that, that threw me off a little bit. Uh, and that just that I just scanned this morning. But he's scrunched up a little bit, so I don't he know. He looked a little older because in '87, Nasty would have still been pretty young. Um, but uh, so, but who knows? We're going to ask him, and then we're going to we're going to we're going to rule him out. But for all the people who are guessing, we've ruled out about 50 of the guesses, and 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 Mark is telling you even the obscure ones um, that he knows it was was not. A lot of people thought it was you, Mark. That was a common one too. Yeah, it's it's the it's the chin. Yeah, that's right. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, some people say Razzle, but Razzle was a drummer, not a guitar player. Razzle would not have been around at that time. I'm not even sure what year Razzle passed uh, off the top of my head. No, no, so, that, was, that was earlier, of course. Yeah. And uh, right, Razzle would already been gone. So this is 1987. Um, anyway, it's, it's well, listen, the mystery <laughs> continues. Hey, we, we probably, Everyone likes a good mystery, so let's let's uh, let's let's continue the mystery and and listen. Like, I'll start. You know, let's start up. Let's start posting. You know, feel free to post those photos, and uh, and if it's not nasty suicide, and if it is someone that can identify it, uh, I will give them a gallery print from the White Sky Gallery, valued at yeah. twelve hundred dollars. So. Uh, yeah, that, well, listen, that'd be great. So someone has to discover this, and uh, and listen, it's been it, we're, we're having a, a good time, and, and it's got to be the first one that 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 posts that person on your site, uh, you know, or or mine, right. mine yeah. or yours, mine or yours. If it's yeah. if and it, and it can't be nasty, of course, you know, nasty. Actually, if it's nasty suicide, he gets to pick a gallery print. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. uh, and. Yeah, his the other reason I don't think it's nasty is his family are all on my Instagram where I've been sharing this. Oh, really? And okay. I feel like one of them would have said, "That's my father," or you know, uh, my uncle. Okay. So okay. I, I, we might, we may not have, uh, we might have struck okay. out on it. Who knows? Right. Okay. This guy here, uh, uh, the Bellas, they're a great little band, uh, young ladies out of New Jersey. They're positive it's Roger Erickson. Oh. Well, who's uh, who's that? Bell is. You got to tell us who Roger Erickson is. I thought it was one of those bands we talked about earlier, though. They're they're young, so they're it must be their dad or a relative who told them. Uh, right. so I yeah. I thought yeah. Yeah, but hey, 
let's get let's get let's figure it out let's get let's make it known who it is uh, whether it's a local person or what have you i mean come on social media is big let's get make it happen yeah uh i'm trying to see the names of these bands that roger erickson was in but i'm sure the ladies can answer that anyway it, it's uh it's the mystery continues you know i better take the breaking news off <laughs> <laughs> People get mad at me that we didn't break news. But listen, this it, it was interesting, and it's, the mystery continues. It's it's and like like you said, and I said, we know people that it's not. We've eliminated a lot of these choices. Um, let's see. Uh, give us some. Yeah, give us some hints. We gave him many hints as we can. We we, we took every stab at it possible. And uh, okay. Uh, we know it's not Chuck Finley. We ruled that out. He wasn't around yet. Mick Mars, he, again, no. Mark would have remembered any no, of these people. No, it's not Mick. I mean, come on. No, yeah. no way. Yeah. Um, uh, Decade the Rock book is on sale. I want to make sure people know they can get it off Amazon or they can go to your website and they can get a signed copy and get prints. I have my Quiet Riot print right here because I'm going to bring it on the road with me and get Rudy to sign it. Yeah. And, uh, and maybe Carlos one or two. That's mine right there. It's a little hard to see, but uh, these are so great. Uh, really cool um, memorabilia. When you order the books, it comes with a whole bunch of fun um, postcards and things. Mark, you really have the fan in mind. I mean, you're a fan yourself of this music. You know what people like. This Quiet Riot book is really, um, really interesting. I think it's a different side of Kevin Debro and the band than, than people know. It, it really gaps the Randy Rose years to what would then become the metal health lineup with Carlos Cavazzo. I um, mean, it shows, it shows Kevin's tenacity. And as, as Rudy, uh, uh, we, I'm actually, uh, doing, uh, a virtual, uh, book release event on March 11th for the anniver 40th anniversary of metal health. We're going to release it then. And we did interviews with, you know, Stephen Piercy and Don Dawkin and, um, Rudy and, and Rudy uh, and D Snyder. And uh, what Rudy said was there's three Kevins, you know, there was the, the Randy kept pre, pre, uh, you know, Dubrow in the beginning. And there was the Dubrow and then there was the metal health Randy. I mean, uh, Kevin. And uh, there was, there was like, it just shows his tenacity and how hard he worked and how resilient he was and and he didn't give up and it's just a it's a great story from this 16 year old girl that when he first she first saw uh quiet riot in the in the club days in in, in the late 70s to becoming dubrow's uh fan club president and then the the mental health during mental health years uh continuing on and and bringing the fans and bringing information to them and being a uh, part of that family and it's it's her story it's notes to her it's things that you didn't know S certain things that a lot of the a lot of the uh people that knew kevin didn't even know and then uh we had we interviewed kevin's mom laura for the um afterward so we have her little uh start uh story as well so it's a uh, it's a passion project uh kevin was a really good friend I did the, uh, my first single sleeve was the Bang Your Head cover. Uh, the one with uh, the Frankie Drew on it, this one here. So that was my first uh, photo shoot with them that we did at the garden when they opened up for Iron Maiden. I first shot them at the US Festival and I said, I got to work with those guys. And uh, I did a few months later and we became fast friends. They took me on tour with them. Whenever I was in LA, Kevin gave me keys to his house, let me stay there, whether it was there or it wasn't. And he was at my wedding and, uh, you know, he was, uh, he was, uh, you know, a great guy. And I, it, this shows a part of him and I feel he, he deserves a little more, uh, recognition on, on how hard he fought to be the number one album in heavy metal chart. I mean, in the, in the billboard charts, you know, yeah. and really helped a lot of bands, uh, open the door for a lot of bands. A lot of record companies started pulling money out of their pocket because of Quiet Riot. Yeah, there's no question that that with a lot of bands, they, they opened that door. You know, as I flip through the book, uh, Kevin Dubrow passed away a stone's throw from where I am right now. Uh, it's a it's a 
interesting. It's a strange feeling, you know, to know that uh, he lived uh, so close. And we were messaging uh, right before he passed. He passed around Thanksgiving. He wanted to come out and play with Sin City Sinners here in Vegas. And him and I were corresponding. And, uh, and you know, tr unfortunately, it wasn't meant to be uh, that he, you know, tragically he passed. Um, Anyway, uh, but so as I flip through the book, it's a, it's, it, it brings a, a strange feeling. It's an, an original take on the book, and that's what I like. This is a different story. And uh, for those who don't like to sit and read <laughs> everything, there's a lot of pictures, which is what you would expect. And as Mark said, these are passion projects uh, that you've been, you've been working on. Some of these are just uh, incredible uh, shots. Yes. So that, that's... Um... That's my only Randy photo in there. That's the photo that they used when he when he passed in Rolling Stone. But all the other Randy and the and the pre nineteen eighty three was from Ron Sobel, who was Kevin's best friend, and uh, and f ended up being a photographer. He did the Japanese record covers. He did he was ended up being the LD, and then that's when I took over in nineteen eighty three. Kind of I did because he was busy doing the lights, so they needed a photographer, yeah. and I kind of filled those shoes. And uh, you know so. I, I really wanted to do a, start doing books, and my girlfriend and I started a publishing company, Mikkel, uh, and it's called Mima Publishing, and this was uh, our first uh, production, and she did uh, a lot of the art direction with uh, another designer named Monica, and we just pulled it together, and uh, I, I feel we were really proud of it, and hope uh, everyone uh, picks up a copy. Yeah, can they pre-order now at your website? Well, they're they're available now. We have limited amount, but uh, we did a we did a, a you know a starter campaign, and we raised enough money to you know pay for a bunch of books. So we have them now. It's kind of like you know we're not really pushing it out now because we want to have enough books for when the uh, event in March 11th is. But you can get it if you're listening to the show. You know, get some you know get it ahead of time. That'd be awesome. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, we'll, we'll share a link to the uh, to the virtual meet and greet that you guys are doing, uh, where people can hear people talk about the book and see a little bit more. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to see. I like that people are still guessing that at this point the names like Richie Scarlet and Richie Sambor or anyone named Richie, uh, uh, Mark would know if it was them. So you got to start digging much deeper, um, and uh, it has to be someone that's. It, it it's it's got to be an unknown i'm thinking you know but yeah i think so too it's funny maybe what i don't know how we find the mystery this guy is there any other way we could solve this mark who who would know did you have anyone with you at the shoot uh i don't i don't think so i don't think so where was that photo taken you know, I, I did have, some, I might have my friend Michael Kirk, who is the editor of Faces Magazine. We did everything together, so I can reach out to Michael. Yeah, he, where, where he, was the photo? Where was it taken, Mark? Uh, I had a studio right across from the Empire State Building and uh, on uh, 33rd Street in the penthouse. So that's where I did uh, the Bon Jovi shoots. And that's, that's where actually that same spot is like that same year, actually, May, maybe two months before that. Uh, I brought Zach up there and to meet Ozzy for the first time, which Ozzy didn't show up uh, because he was drinking with Andre the Giant and didn't make it. But I, we found Zach and uh, my friend Dave Feld uh, found Zach in a club in New Jersey and brought him to my studio where Ozzy was supposed to be and to look at some photographs. So that's the same spot. And uh did a lot of memorable shoots. I did Anthrax, I'm the man at that sh at that studio. And that's where I did the Danzig photo shoot. Did a lot there. A lot of bands rehearsed in that area too. All around Madison Square Garden, a lot of the buildings in the 30s, uh, you would have a lot of rehearsal spaces and, and as you said, photo spaces. Uh, question, uh, hold on, not that one. Let's go to this one. John Logan, was there ever anyone Mark never got to photograph that he wished he had the chance? Uh, probably, uh, I mean, I've shot Pantera, but not in the, I would have loved to shoot him in the eighties, you know, when, when the, the hair was going on, you know, that would have been cool, but I did shoot Pantera and I shot dime back. Uh, not really. I mean, I've shot pretty much everyone that I've ever wanted to, you know, would I have loved to go on the road with 
Led Zeppelin or the Rolling Stones. Uh, yes, that would be a, a, a pretty cool. But uh, <coughs> I think I hit everyone. I mean, I was, you know, once I had the access, uh, whenever someone came to town or they were opening up for another band uh, or they were just starting out, I would just get right in there and then and then kind of grow with them. Dragon City Demo says his friend just told him that's Jay, the guitarist from a local New York band Whoa. from that time called the Jinx. Could be. Wow. All right. Well, if that person can prove it, then he gets the gallery print. Yeah. If you can. And so right now we have you on the record is the first one to say that from the band, the Jinx. <coughs> if we can find the guy, uh, you would win the print, which would be great. And we would solve the mystery. Um, and then we'll get them on. <laughs> we'll get them on the next show or something. Yeah, we, 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 could, we could be responsible for the Jinx resurgence, you know. Uh, right, right. It's not good that neither one of us remember it. But uh, here's a question that's a tough one to answer. I don't think he can, but we'll give it a shot. What is the best photo you ever took? Oh, well, one of, I, I, don't, I don't have a best uh, uh but one of my favorites is Ozzy in the bathtub, just because it's the first time I met Ozzy and we just kind of hit it off right away. Ozzy sitting, you know, naked in the bathtub with a cigar in his mouth and bubbles. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah no, no, very famous shot. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, the person that uh, of the jinx that we're talking about, they're, they're pretty sure he's passed some time ago. So Mark might be the only person who uh, has the... Who was uh, who's presently alive? Who was at that photo shoot? So, um, well, if, if that person can dig up a photo, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> find the photo. Uh, let's let's see if we can find this band, the Jinx. I mean, why not? I I, I find it hard to believe, but let's take a look. Right. I want to give. I want to send people home happy, but maybe the mystery is better. Maybe if you, if you knew, you would be uh, disappointed. Uh, there's a band called the Jinx that I'm looking at. They're all a bunch of bald guys, uh, uh, heavy set punk rockers. So it's got to be a different uh, uh, Jinx. What, what did he say? The guy's name was Dan. Let me take a look. Um. J. Oh, his name was Jay. That's what they're guessing. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're the mystery is continuing. Uh, I'm looking them up. There, there is a band called Jinx, but boy, none of these guys fit that description. Mm. You know, but uh, you mean you never know. We're gonna have to get uh, the mystery continues. We'll have to. We'll get, we we won't rest until we solve this internet mystery. Maybe uh, we should uh, stump the trunk. You know. I'm sure he doesn't know. <laughs> he's going to say, are you out of your mind? Uh, no, no, he's not going to know the jigs. Uh, let's see. Here. Uh, quick, here's a quick question. I, uh, did you ever shoot Johnny Thunders? I did, yeah, back in uh, Max's, Kansas City. I When I first uh, started going to New York in like 78, 79, I went to Max's a lot and CBGB's, um, the Mud Club. And uh, I was hanging out with this guy named Neon Leon. He had the song on uh, WPLJ, uh, Rock and Roll is Alive in New York City, that they used for the theme song. And I did the single sleeve for it. Um, so that technically was my first single sleeve, but it was independent. And a, uh, a blonde girl, a uh, bass player named Honey O'Rourke. And they <coughs> used to a lot of people like Joy Ryder, Avis Davis, and uh, Cheetah Chrome. And they kind of got me, I was like 18, 19 at the time. And, and uh, they introduced me to all these people. And Johnny Thunders used to go there and hang out. So I have, you know, and Howie, uh, Howie Pyro uh, was back there. I got a bunch of shots of him back in the day. There was a band called The Blessed, uh, The Bullies. So I, that's that's another chapter that I'm going to, I wanted to put these, put it in this book as a, like the pre, the decade that rock, but it didn't, it didn't. Fit. <laughs> so that's something else I want to do too, is kind of, you know, do more of the punk stuff that I was involved in. Yeah, we're fortunate that you have so much to, to, to share. Um, in our first interview, I showed some of your photos uh, with the Ramones from the Boy Howdy uh, out of Cream magazine, uh, so some of my favorite shots. And, and I love some of these uh, punk guys as well. 
All right, the mystery continues. 300 people still waiting for an answer. <laughs> Mark's going to continue to to research, but I mean, who knows if the Tony text message is gone? Who the hell knows? But <clears throat> maybe somebody out there knows, and maybe it's this this uh, Jinx guy. Who knows? Um, anyway, keep on rolling. My fan club years with Kevin DeBro and Quiet Riot. Available now featuring Ron Sobel and Mark Weiss photos, of course. And then the Decade of the Rock. I, I feel like if you don't have this book, you're missing out. This is, and there's still people uh, uh, who want to get it, and it, it's it's on sale right now on Amazon. It's also on Mark's website. It's great. I got uh, it made the greatest Christmas present. Michelle got the Decade of the Rock. Uh, Mark was nice enough to include some prints, and uh, it, it made Christmas. It made me look like a a hero because the book is uh, is just just great and really fun. You can pick it up over and over and over again. Everyone I know has it, loved it, so I recommend. Uh, yeah, I thanks. Recommend yeah. yeah, if you get yeah. it, at, uh, if you get it on my site, I, I'll personalize it to anyone you want, um, and you get the postcards and other little goodies sometimes. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to call the CIA now to get to help me investigate. This is the <laughs> the investigation goes on. Uh, um, Phoenix is asking if you have a book of telling about the stories about the shoots. Uh, not yet. Well, actually, this the decade that rocked is that book. Uh, yeah, it's narrative, but I do talk about like specific shoots. Not the whole, not all the way through, but like uh, docking under lock and key. I go in detail on that. The Skid Row um, uh, first album. I go into detail about how that, how, how why I didn't get the cover. And uh, when Sebastian read it, he he didn't know I was I went through all the, that that stuff, you know. So it was some intimate details on the politics of being a rock and roll photographer as well. Uh, so I I talk about that and uh, the Last Command. I talk about I did the Last Command. So you know I do a little bit of a a little bit of narrative. Talked about where is that uh, uh, where is that alley on the back of the Skid Row record? Is that an actual alley? Well, the cover was real. Uh, the, this long story short was, uh, all right. I, you know, I, I I'm not going to say I'm responsible, but if I didn't get married, uh, Se Sebastian wouldn't have been at the wedding, and he wouldn't have went up and jammed with Zach and Kevin Dubrow and John Bon Jovi's parents wouldn't have seen him, and Dave Feld, my best man, wouldn't have contacted the Skid Row guys who we knew. So that's long story short. That's how we got in the band. But uh, I just assumed I was going to get the cover, you know? I mean, I did all these other covers. I did Bon Jovi. I did Cinderella. I did, did Dokken. But the record company hired a photographer, one of their guys, uh, to do this black and white photo because they, I guess, didn't think I was that kind of a photographer, whatever that meant. And when I found out they did it, I got really upset and I contacted uh, their manager, Scott McGee. And I was like, what just happened? You know, and he's like, Mark, I'm sorry. You know, it had nothing to do with it. They wanted to go with this guy. He's got this black and white deal thing going. I said, Scott, you know, I can do anything, you know, give me a chance, you know? So uh, we went back and forth and he said, you know, tell, show me the photo. Let me see what I can do. He, they showed it to me, and I, I was like, I, 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 I thought it was okay, but I, I it wasn't bright enough. It wasn't like, it, I just felt it, it could have, uh, it, it could have been better, I guess, or you know, I don't know if I just wanted it to be my photo. So I said, take care of my expenses. Let me do it on spec. Let me see what I can come up with, and have the guys come over. And, and in worst case scenario. Uh, and, you know, I let the better man win, you know, or let the better cover win. So I went balls out. They agreed. Uh, the band was up for it. You know, they, you know, they're a new band. They're just going with whatever, you know, they, they're told to do. And, uh, and so I built this set. I wanted to have total control over it. So that was a built set in a studio, actually the same studio that I shot uh, some of the promo photos for Slippery One Wet in Red Bank, New Jersey. And I built this set. It looked like an alleyway and I lit it really like, you know, strategically. And, and I, I thought that was the cover, you know, I thought it was a great shot. I, the band loved it. And 
the management said they the the um, the ad mats already went out with the other cover, so they couldn't switch it. Every, supposedly they wanted to switch it, but they couldn't because the ad mats went out and it wouldn't match. So I lost the cover, but they ended up using it on the back and single sleeves and on the single sleeve. I remember thinking the photo on the single sleeve was actually better than the album cover. It showed the band better. Yeah, it was used on on, on almost everything else uh, except for the cover. I mean, everyone wants the cover. Uh, so that's the only disappointing. And I tell that story in detail, which I just told you here, but it's in the book. So those are the kind of things I tell in the book. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, last one, and you've told this one a lot, but uh, Cinderella Night Songs. Tom Kiefer talked about how, uh, how how he thought you were crazy at the time. The record's called Night Songs, and you took the photo during the day. Is, is, is that an outdoor photo? Yeah, that was done in uh, Pennsylvania. There's a, a landmark. And that's where, you know, Tom wanted to do it. But he envisioned it some kind of night vibey shot. And I was like, yeah, that, that's easy. No problem. And then I scheduled the shoot. I mean, I didn't want to do it at night because you have you don't have as much control. You know, it's it's dark and, you know, we have generators going. You know, it's just not like you can just plug it into the wall. <laughs> so uh, I I wanted to have a little more control. Once the once the night hits, everyone starts scattering. You don't know what's going on, and and so I shot it in day daylight. And Tom said, "You know, what do you what are we doing here? Is is it called night songs?" And he go and I, I I said, and I don't remember saying it, but he told me it later when I when I interviewed him, he said uh, he said that I said I shoot day for night, and he didn't know what I was talking about, but he trusted me <laughs> and he said, okay, Mark, whatever that means. Uh, and I tried to explain to him what it was. I don't think he understood, but it, it must've been convincing because they, they went for it. But basically yeah. is if, if you're in, in, if you're, if you're shooting photos during the day and you use a flash or a strobe, it's so powerful that it knocks out the available light, the daylight. And that's exactly what I did. So I had smoke machines, gels on the smoke. So it didn't look anything like that. It would have been awesome if I had a video of, of that shoot because it would have been just, you wouldn't see the purple smoke and and the, the lights and all that. It would just been a bright lit set. And, yeah. and I had, you know, it, it was difficult doing, but you know, that's why you take Polaroids. It's not even digital where you, you just shoot it and you look at it. You have to take the picture, do a Polaroid, wait a minute look at it show the band and then you know it's it's a process um but uh yeah it was uh i shoot day for night mm -hmm. it's uh well and it's turned out to be one of the great covers of that uh that decade you know it's uh everyone can picture that one <coughs> hard to believe now when we look at it that it's nighttime all right well mark we're gonna wrap up um Tons of people still waiting. They're they're waiting for us to reveal <laughs> the name. They think <laughs> they think we're joking. But uh, uh, anyway, we'll we'll see. We're going to continue to investigate. But in the meantime, check out Keep On Rolling and check out the Decade of the Rock. Links in the description. Mark, I look forward to seeing you again. Hopefully soon. You're going to be at the uh, podcast Palooza. Oh, Rock and Pod, March seventeenth, and uh, Rock Nash and Pod. I'm I'm in heavy negotiations to to go, but. Uh, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. It sounds fun. It's in Nashville. <coughs> Mark will be there. You can meet Mark and get some signed books and and uh, ask him your questions. Ask him when you see him. Ask him who's in the photo with Tony Katane. <laughs> see if he gives you a different. I'll, I'll dig around. Maybe I can find that uh, a text message that because uh, I'm I, I might have I might have like screenshotted it and saved it or whatnot. Yeah. Well, we're going to continue to 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 dig through the archives. Mark, thank you so much. I appreciate you stopping by. All right. Thanks for having me on, Jason Green. Let's waste yeah. some time. We're wasting a little time, and I'll see you again soon, I hope. Okay, brother. Thanks, Mark. All right, Mark Weiss, he was here. Well, I'm glad that he came on. Listen, as we were going through the list of people who it could have been, it was very obvious that Mark would have known who they were. I didn't want to say anything because it was fun to speculate. Maybe I would be wrong. But when Mark told me that he couldn't remember, that eliminated everyone that you had uh, guessed, you know. Maybe some of these small ones is a possibility, but as Mark said, he remembers a lot of those bands like Smash Gladys. He, he, he was a part of the New York scene. So it has to be someone that he really didn't uh, remember.
you know, and, and that would be tricky. And uh, after looking at the picture of the face, it has me believing that it might not be nasty suicide either. Anyway, it makes it interesting. It's one of those rock and roll um, uh, mysteries where everyone likes a good mystery and will continue to uh, to to work to to solve it. Uh, I'm glad that you guys uh, were here. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. A lot of people really had a good time uh, uh, watching, and uh, and I'm glad. I'm glad that you liked it. Uh, where, where is uh, I'm trying to show the nice people's comments. Um, and uh, yeah, and there's uh, let's see. <laughs> and uh, this Friday, Sheree Curry from The Runaways is my guest, and she's got some great stories. And like I said, we're going to talk about some things that I don't think she's talked about uh, everywhere. Why did she get fired from the movie Savage Streets uh, and replaced by Linda Blair? Why did she uh, choose one legendary uh, movie over another? She chose Foxes, obviously. We'll find out the movie she turned down. I promise you, <clears throat> it's a movie you all know. She talks about her friendship with Jodie Foster and when that ended. And she talks about her reconciliation with Kim Fowley. Kim Fowley, one of the most controversial people in music. I didn't want to get too much into the dark side of it. Uh, Sherry has a book where you can hear about some of those stories. So uh, anyway, tune in Friday. Monday, we'll be back to Tour Diaries. Mark will be in one of the upcoming Tour Diaries because we filmed out in Key West. You want to stay tuned. Uh, go to Patreon. Sign up. You can watch the interviews before anybody else ad-free and, uh, and you help support the channel. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. This Monday, uh, this Friday, Sherry Curry. This Monday, new Tour Diary. Wednesday, we'll be back on live. Then we're off to Houston for the uh, big Super Bowl party hosted by Eddie Trunk. Uh, uh, Stephen Piercy with special guest Slaughter. And then from there, we, we it's going to be a long year of Stephen Piercy on the road. Lots of great shows that we can't announce just yet, but there'll be more with Vince Neil and a lot of your other favorite bands. Thank you guys for watching, and I look forward to seeing you all on Friday. Have a good night.